Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of the Track and Knife Game Asset Series. Today I'm going to be taking you through the baking and getting everything ready to texture. So we're going to export this uh, high poly model by adding a turbo smooth modifier on top and setting it to two iterations that will give us uh, enough smoothing and we'll go to export and use the xnormal SBM exporter which if you haven't used before is a fantastic way of getting your models into xnormal from 3ds max so click high definition mesh and click export So let's get the low poly exported. I'm selecting the low poly and I'm going to apply a projection modifier to it. And then I'm going to turn on shaded mode and increase the push amount. Now the idea of the, uh, this projection modifier is to encapsulate your model in this projection which is what we're going to be using as our projection cage. You don't want to go too high with the push amount because then you'll start to get distortions in your normal mapping. But you, you want it to be quite quite big enough to encapsulate all detail. Any detail that comes through your cage, uh, your projection, will not be captured in your bake. So I'm just having a look at some of the, the uh, unwrap at the same time here and making a slight modifications, just tidying things up that uh, need, need doing. There was a couple of unwelded verts there that I noticed that I need to fix. Uh, the only reason that I saw that was because I put the projection on and I could see that the cage was actually breaking. So that solved two, two problems in one. Now I'm hand edit editing my cage here just by going into the projection uh, sub object mode and moving the verts around. So let's move on to smoothing groups now. Uh, you'll notice in the last part of the last video I added a small bevel to the sides and then added a little bit more geometry around here so the normal map's got more to work with and we'll get a cleaner bake result. And I'll go into the specific reasons uh, for that in another video uh, just primarily on baking and, and normal mapping but uh, it's just a workflow video I'll just move on. So I'm going to go and add an unwrap modifier to the object and have a look at our UV. Uh, as, as you can see our UV split up into uh, multiple parts and for the best result uh, and it, it's some good advice I got was to uh, keep all of your smoothing groups uh, the same as your UV islands. So if I if I select this uh, top UV island in polygon mode and then do a collapse, then go back to my polygon selection and I'll apply a smoothing group of one to this. Okay, so that's, that, that's smoothing group one applied to that side. And now I'm going to deselect, uh, unwrap again, and I'm going to select the same same way, uh, the poly group for the other side of the knife and collapse it. And, yep, you guessed it, add a smoothing group of two. So now we'll deselect again, unwrap, and we're going to select the top now, uh, the top of uh, the knife that we've unwrapped. Convert to edit poly, select the polygon mode. And I'm going to give that a smoothing group of three. And you can see already uh, we've got this hard line going through uh, our smoothing groups. So they're, they're separated off now. No, no longer does the surface have to try and uh, uh, go across a 90 degree angle and work out the normals from that. We've got two separate smoothing groups. And yes, you will see this hard line in the game uh, or in the, uh, the engine you're putting this into. But you won't really notice it because you'll have a normal map on it, which you'll all have taken it already taken it into account so you'll see it a lot less than you would the bake errors that you'd get if you didn't use the smoothing group method uh, so the only other object to, to add the smoothing group to is the uh, ring of, of metal on the back so I'll, I'll select that collapse it and set that to a smoothing group of four Okay, now 
when working with uh, something like this and yeah, you shouldn't really be worried about the, the way this mesh is looking in the max viewport. I'll turn it to one light to be make it easier to see. Now you see you got some you can see some triangles across your model. There's some quite ugly ones there that are sort of poking out. Now generally uh, these these wouldn't be uh, they don't look like they'd be very good, but the normal map takes into account all of these things. The surface is flat. It is a one smoothing group, and it will bake uh, perfectly. The it just it just looks like this in the display viewport. We because we're not we're not building this mesh for turbo smooth. We're building this mesh for uh, for normal mapping for inclusion in the game engine, and and these just don't matter in in Max at all. So don't worry about those. So that's our object ready to export. And we'll just go ahead and uh, get that exported. So now with the model exported and I've made sure to uh, include the cage by clicking low definition mesh, we can get these into X normal and start our bakes. So when you open X normal, you get this uh, window and I'm gonna load in the high definition mesh first. So if I navigate to that, now I've got my knife high SBM model. And then I'll add my low definition mesh in there as well, which is the low definition mesh. And then I'm making sure that I click use cage and that I'll use the projection modifier as a cage that we uh, created in the previous step. Uh, I've got uh, use exported normals and I can choose uh, average normals harden or use exported but because we modified our normals and added our own smoothing groups then I want to keep that uh, tick to use exported. Now that's pretty much all the settings that I'm going to play with uh, for, for this tutorial. Um, so it's just a matter of going ahead and baking now. So 2048 by 1024 which is the map size that we wanted and I'll just call it um, uh, a test bake for now and we'll save that off as uh, BMP or uh, TGA. It doesn't really matter at this point. I just want to see what my uh, render looks like, see what my bake looks like. I've got a couple of options here. I've got the, the, the CUDA renderer, which because I've got a GeForce card I can use, which is a lot, pretty lightning fast for creating these maps. Uh, the only thing is it doesn't have anti-aliasing support. So um, we can render it double the size and scale it down in Photoshop, or we can use the default uh, bucket renderer for from X normal. So usually when I'm doing these bakes, I'll turn the edge padding down to zero, uh, so I can see what my mesh looks like, how clean it is, without having any errors at all. The edge padding takes um, the 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 pixel at the edge of the UV borders and then expands it outwards, which is great because then you don't get um, problems when, when you go to lower MIP levels or you don't get problems with uh, bleeding of the normals. But for viewing your mesh and, and whether you've got any bake errors, it's, it's preferential to, to keep that at zero. You can always add it again using the X-Normal dilation plugin later, uh, but uh, you're better off just doing it uh, in the bake and turning up the edge padding when you know that you've got a clean bake. So I'm gonna hit generate map and here we go. This is what our object's looking like. So I'll open that up in Photoshop and see how that looks. And then check out how it looks in Marmoset. So here's how the final bake turned out. Uh, we've got in the Marmoset scene we set up earlier, I've just turned on the normal map, add a little bit of specularity. And I can see that the model's looking really good. There's not many, as well as no UV problems or seams or any major errors there that I can I can see, uh, apart from the ones caused by the video capture. But as I said in the previous videos, I've upgraded now to a better capture software, so hopefully that will all change. So I'm really happy with the way this knife's looking now. Uh, it's a really good bake. So I'm going to move on to texturing now. So see you guys in part five.